glad to be here. Amen. Amen, amen. The word of God said we're two or three together, amen. Uh, being on one accord. And I think we on one accord this morning, amen. That he would be in the midst. So we know that God is already here. Amen. So whatever we need this morning, God is already here. Waiting to give it, amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you this morning, Lord. Thank you for this day, oh God. A day that we've never seen before, God. But God, we're so grateful that you allowed us to see it, God. And in that, Lord God, we're going to give you everything that we have, oh God. We're going to give it to you because it belongs to you. I praise, oh God. It belongs to you because, God, you are so worthy today. Oh God, we just thank you. Lord, well, can't thank you enough for your goodness and your mercy, God. Knowing that many times we're not deserving, God, but you keep on blessing. So, God, we just honor you in this on today. Lord, just have your way throughout this service on today, God. Use, Lord God, the praise team, oh God. Use the one of God that's going to bring the word. Use the choir, oh God, to minister to your people on today, oh God. And, God, we just ask that you bless, Lord God, those grieving families, oh God. Mother Page, oh God, a woman of God, Lord, that loved you, oh God. We just ask that you just... Wrap your loving arms around her family, oh God. Give them strength, oh God, to go on, God. So, and Lord, we just ask for Sister Glenda's mother, oh God, Miss Barbara, oh God. Lord, you know what needs to take place, oh God. So we just ask that you go in that hospital room, oh God. Wrap your healing arms around Sister Barbara, God, and just heal the Lord, God. Heal the mind, heal the body, heal the soul, oh God. Like only you can do, God. And God, we just thank you, Lord. And Lord, if I've left anybody out today, God, you know who they are, God. And I just ask that you just be with them, God. Give strength, oh God, where strength is needed. Give healing where healing is needed. Give deliverance where deliverance is needed, oh God. And we just go so careful today to always give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. And it's here for my praise team.
today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. The scripture reading for today comes from Romans 12, beginning at verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking. Whew. Never be lacking in zeal. But keep your spiritual favor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction. Faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Let me repeat that. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another and do not be proud. But be willing to associate with people in low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it is, it depends on you. Live at peace with everyone. Do not revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord, on the contrary. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome evil by evil, but overcome evil with good. A word from God for the people of God. was a word, eh? Amen. There was a word for all of us to heed to, amen? Amen. amen. Good morning again. Good morning. Amen. Our announcements this morning, Youth Ministry Book Club will meet every Sunday at 11 a.m. Any preschool to high school student wanting to participate in the program on Resurrection Sunday, please inbox Ms. Jennifer your name and your age, amen? So those two for our youth um, any youth that want to participate in the book club or in the Resurrection Sunday program, please see um, Sister Jennifer. This card was supposed to have been read last week, but of course, you know, the Spirit of God came in and we did what he did. He did what he had to do, amen, and so it wasn't no time for the announcements, amen. <laughs> so this morning I have a card that came from Minister Bass and it says, your thoughtfulness is so appreciated. Thank you for the basket, and this comes from Minister Antoinette Bass, amen. We also have an announcement here. Um, we know that if you're looking at your, your, your calendar, and you're looking at the dates, um, next Sunday is scheduled to be past appreciation. But since so much has come up before, um, before us, we're gonna push that back a little bit. And we're just gonna um, ask that if you want to, so this is Mother Taylor asking for donations of homemade desserts. And if you want to contribute to any other items, please see Mother Taylor, amen. So if you want to contribute to Pastor's Appreciation Dinner, please see Mother Taylor. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we will we'll come. We are, he has told us the fourth Sunday, but in this month, next month, but we will definitely give you the correct date when it's confirmed. Amen? Amen. So the fourth Sunday in April is what we're looking at. But if that changes, we will let you know. Amen? Amen. Amen. Once again, I would just like to um, send our condolences to the, to the Page family. You know, I, I can just see Mother Page looking down now and smiling because, you know, her family is here. Amen. 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 That could have been, that could have been an, an excuse for them to stay at home. Mm -hmm. But they're here lifting up the name of Jesus because yes, she right. taught them that it's all about Jesus. Amen. Yes. So we just want to just lift them up. Amen. And go by them and give them a hug just to let them know that we here at Stonewell have their back and we love them and we got them. Amen. 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 And we also ask that you keep Sister Glenda's mother in your prayers as well, amen. She's in the hospital, amen. But we know God to be a healer, amen. And we are praying for healing on her behalf, amen. At this time, 
We're gonna hear from our choir refresh. Jesus promised he'll take care of you. Amen. No matter what you're going through, yes, just give it to him. He'll take care of you.
Habakkuk was one of the 12 minor prophets. And this book only has three chapters. And as, as your leisure, I, I, I suggest you read it. But this entire chapter is focused on a conversation between Habakkuk and God. We see now it's apparent Habakkuk has a personal relationship with the Lord because he came to the Lord boldly, with confidence, mm -hmm. reassured himself, asking questions. And I know that many times Pastor Dumas has told us, it's okay to ask God questions. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna have a conversation if you don't, you don't ever ask a question? All right. Amen? Amen? So he was struggling about something, Habakkuk was. Something he was struggling with and he wanted some answers. And you know, when we're troubled, struggling to understand some things going on in our life, we need to take it to the Lord. Yeah. Now, we don't need to call Sally, Sue, and John. Yeah. We need to ask the Lord. Because yeah. I'm telling you all, last night when I was wrestling with that mess, I said, oh, what is this? Mm -hmm. I didn't call my daughter and say, Teresa, pray for me. I didn't do that. Now, I, I, I love her prayer, don't get me wrong. But I asked, I said, Lord, I need you to direct me in this. Yeah. You understand? So we need to go to him. In fact, the Lord tells us to do what? Cast all of our cares on him. Then he gives us the reasons for doing it. He says, because he cares about us. And I don't know about you, something I just take on my own. And don't I mess up when I do that? Messing up means you have a headache? I'm serious. Blood pressure goes up. When he said, just give it to him. He, has, he already has answers anyway. And look, and he's still, he's still away. He doesn't sleep. So he's there waiting on us. So we go to him with our questions and troubles. He answers our solution might not be what we want. And many times that's the case. He answers to our benefit. But because we trust him, we go to him anyway. And we wait. And you know, there are many times the Lord, he'll just say, just stand still and do what and see. Some of us have a problem standing still. Talking about internet right now. Sometimes we have a problem. I have a problem. And when I say stand still, you don't just stand there nonchalant. You got to stand there and pray. Just yeah. Lord, direct me. Yeah. And I think old age has a lot to do with that. You know, we, we you don't think so, but it does. <laughs> but um, by that I mean wisdom teaches us we need to wait on him. So here in our text, Habakkuk's living in Judah. And that was a time when they didn't have a king or they didn't have a judge, so they just did things the way they thought they should be done. Anything that felt right to them, they did it. But we're going to see where, in this book, the Lord talks to Habakkuk. So Habakkuk has had enough. He began this book in the first chapter with a question. He said, how long must I cry to you and I don't get a response? How many of us have asked the Lord a question? Lord, how long I got to go through this? You know, and, and I hate to hear somebody say, well, somebody, um, to the fact that, just wait, something's gonna come around the corner. I don't, I don't. You don't, you don't be looking for stuff. Especially negative stuff, but we do that to ourselves. What, what's next? Every time you turn around, there's something, yes it is. But it's some good stuff when you turn around too. So the Lord tells, he tells her back, just, just calm down her back. In other words, you stay in your lane, I got this. And see, as we read this, we're going to see where the Lord advised Habakkuk that I'm going to straighten this thing out, but I'm going to do it my way. And he was going to use the Babylonians to straighten the Jews out. Now, you, you said, well, in fact, Habakkuk want to know, why are you using those people who are sinful? We are so judgmental sometimes, y'all. Why are you going to use them to get us straight? But the Lord was telling him so many words, like I said, stay in your lane, I got this. He had a plan. But he doesn't always give us his plan. He most certainly doesn't give us the results of his plan. But he wanted Habakkuk to know that you just stay, do what you're supposed to do, and I do what I'm supposed to do. Now let's look at verse 4. I only read 17, 18, and 19, but verse 4 tells us, this is in the um, first chapter, first book. Like I said, it's only three chapters, y'all. Y'all can read all three of them. But verse 4 says, Therefore, the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth com compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceeds. In other words, Habakkuk is telling the Lord, you see all these people doing wrong, and they, never, they don't ever have to pay for it. But you know what? They just keep living. 
You don't, you don't get old by mistreating folk. It's down the road somewhere. We have to be careful how we treat each other. We have to be careful of the stones that we throw, but they may come right back to us. So he was telling him, although it looks like they're getting away, they're not getting away. Judgment is right down the road. So he wanted him to know. The Lord answers a bit and tells him he is about to do something about the situation. He's sending the Babylonians to handle it. And then let's look at verse 6 of the same chapter. He's still talking to Habakkuk. Verse 6 tells us, verse 1, we're still in uh, chapter 1. For lo, I raised up the Chaldeans, that's those Babylonians, that bitter and hasty nation which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. In other words, he was sending the Babylonians there to take care of business. And to tell them, I beg you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. So he let him know that I got this, Tabitha. You just do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And you know, that's the way it is with us. When we are dealing with stuff, we are dealing with stuff. We have to realize who's in control. Yeah. Even this world that we live in, there's so much stuff going on in our world today. But who's in control? The Lord is. And he shows himself on a, on a daily basis that he's in control. Uh -huh. Now in chapter 2, we're coming down to our chapter. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, you see what the, the Lord told Rebecca, he has an answer. He reminds him he's going to do it. In other words, he might not come when you want, but he's going to come on time. Amen. The Lord was using the wicked Babylonians to get his point over. So here we are in this third chapter, where is where our text is today. And now Becky is praying for the people. He does it on a daily basis. It's good to have somebody praying for you. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we can't get a prayer through. Not for us. We're not there. But sometimes we're, we're carrying so much on us. We just, you know, just don't have the function to pray. And we ask somebody else to pray for us. And we have to be careful who we ask to pray for us too now. Amen. Because a lot of times they'll do the P-R-E-Y and not the P-R-A-Y. <laughs> and we just don't want that. <laughs> And there's a song that says, it's been a long time. I'm so glad somebody prayed for me. Yes. My mother took the time to pray for me. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise this morning. Yes. Some of you might be going through something today that you don't understand. Don't know what, why this happened to me or hum hum, but praise him anyhow. Don't let your current situation rob you of your praise. You know, this makes Satan upset when we are going through stuff and we still find time to praise him. I look at the page, friends. It's my vision early. They are here today. They are here today. Let's give them a praise. Because many times, if you don't praise, you won't get your breakthrough. Many times, we'll miss our breakthrough and we don't say, yeah, I'm going to praise because right. he's saying, I want you to pray me, first of all. Right. And he put so much stuff in front of us on a daily basis. And maybe some of you haven't gone through anything, but I'm sure all of us have at one point. But see, and it comes like one, two, three. You know, he, you know, he doesn't care how much he throws in your way. Mm -hmm. But I think about when the Lord begins to bless us, yes. he blesses us of all measure. Plenty of blessings. Yeah. If it's just waking up in the morning. So for a few minutes, I just want to give you three reasons why Habakkuk said, thank God anyway. Yes. He gave us three. First one, God is sovereign. And we read that from verses 17 to 18. If you look at verse 17, Habakkuk is describing the physical stuff going on. He said that the plants don't grow, and then when they go, there's nothing on the field, nothing in the field. He gave all this, these physical facts. He even says, when they grow, the stuff fall off the vine. You know, in other words, it's not doing them any good. But then you drop down to verse 18. And to me, that's, those are the spiritual facts. He has looked at his situation. You see what he, the kind of shape he's in. He doesn't have uh, the, uh, the produce to feed his family. But he drops down to verse 18. He said, yeah. yeah. Regardless of what's going on with this in, in 17, yet yeah, I'm going to pray. To me, that, that was a spiritual fact. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Yeah. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yeah. See, he doesn't make this thing personal. Yeah. Yeah. But 
But he looked at his situation and he sees all this negative stuff going on, but he finds something positive about it. I'm going to praise him anyhow. And Satan don't want you to praise the Lord. Come on now, think about it. He wants want you to give him all the credit. But we know who does it. We know he's a God of faith to us. And then he says, Sir, circumstances change, but God doesn't. That's what Solomon means. He's the same yesterday, he's the same today, he's the same tomorrow. But folks change over. I said it again. All right. <laughs> folks change over. Yeah. Husbands change over. Wives, children change over. Oh, God, children change over. But God stays the same. He's a God we can depend on. I was calling on him this morning, y'all, at 1.30 in the morning. He came to my rescue. I don't know what your 1.30 looks like. I don't know what mine looks like.
give him praise when I don't have a dime in my pocket. We need to give him praise when I might get a couple dollars in the mail tomorrow. But I'm going to praise him anyway.
telling us to get those things and let the Lord handle it. Unburden ourselves. Unattach ourselves from all this stuff. Now, don't you know if we sit down and look at the news and, and see what's going on, we, we would never hold our head up. But the Lord is in control. And every day, and I tell you, several days I don't look at the news. I don't know about you, but I just turn it off or something else. Because I know, first of all, it can get in your mind. Yeah. And we don't want to receive it negative. So in verse 17, Habakkuk is stripped of everything that he had naturally. And he tells us that. But then he stays deaf down in verse 18. And that's where he gets his praise. So that's what the Lord does for us. He makes our feet high. He makes us stand strong. Now, are there any yet praises in the house? Today? My Lord, yes. 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 Are there any that I will praise him regardless? Yes. Are there any that say, look, I don't know if what the doctor said. I'm still going to give him praise. Yes. He's worthy to be praised. Yes. yes. And I know many times we go through stuff we don't know how to handle, and all of us, we're flesh. But I read this story, and this was so enlightening to me. The name of it is, They Sent Me to Finish. The Olympic Games was in Mexico in 1968. The marathon is the first final event on the program. The Olympic Stadium is packed. There is excitement as the first athlete Ethiopian runner enters the stadium. The crowd erupts as he crosses the finish line. Way back in the field is another runner, John Stephen Ockworth of Tanzania. He has been eclipsed by the other one. They left him. After 30 kilometers, his head is throbbing, his muscles are aching, and he falls to the ground. He has serious leg injuries, and officials went in and wanted him to retire, but he refused. Remember that we're in a race. With his knee bandage, Akwari picks himself up and hobbles the remaining 12 kilometers to the finish line. An hour after the winner has finished, Akwari enters the stadium, whole hour later. All but a few thousand.
Minister Thornton, would you kindly pray for her? That's their still coming. Would you kindly pray for her?
Um, real quickly, the uh, young people and parents that are here, if you would like to be updated on our meeting from last week, just meet me briefly afterwards and I'll update you on that. But I have a message from the pastor's desk. We didn't get an opportunity to thank each and every one of you for the wonderful seven year anniversary that we had. And he just wanted to say thank you for your attendance, thank you for your giving, thank you for the wonderful food, the beautiful decorations, and everything that you did. But April is coming up and we have a busy month. As you know, uh, normally we would celebrate the pastor's appreciation on his birthday, but we're gonna push it to the fourth Sunday in April. And we want you to prepare your minds to bless our pastor on this day. He has been going through a lot. He's been out of work. He's been going through uh, some things with his health. So we want to show him how much we love him. He'll be 50 this year. That's a milestone. He will have seven years in the ministry. So start your baseline gift with $57 and take it up. Let's show him on the fourth Sunday how much we love, how much we appreciate him. We do not want to come stepping in here half-stepping. We want to let him know how much we miss him and that we need him back in this pool pit. Okay? And no devil in hell, no matter what they praying against him, P-R-E-Y, against him, that what God has done. No man, no devil, no devil in hell is going to stop. And we will stand together boldly on his behalf. We will continue to stand in the gap until he gets back here in this pulpit where we need him. And so we ask that you all stand in agreement on behalf of our pastor, our first lady, our first family, and the entire Stonewell Nation that we will prevail in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen.
good week.